Uh, I like this kind of Uchimata because you see a lot of people bent over today. They're fighting out low, and you know, whether, whether Judo or Sambo, maybe BGJ, so you guys bent over. So this is really an ideal way to hit Uchimata. It's also great for newer guys to learn Uchimata. I think this is a way really to learn this a quicker learning curve for this than the, the standard lifting style Uchimata. So we're going to do this. Derek is being very defensive, he's all bent over. He's, he's an ideal candidate to get thrown with this type of Uchimata, okay? Some things I'm gonna do to set him up, all right? Uh, I wanna get a grip, my, my left hand on the sleeve, I wanna get a fairly long grip, a very long grip, down here at the end of his sleeve because you'll see how this comes in here, okay? So you may grab a little higher. This is my preference and you'll see why I'm doing it in a moment here. Now on the other hand, we'll be right around here, about this part of the judo gi here. I'm not going to come over with the grip. You can if it's really bent over and being excessively defensive, but often you'll probably get this angle here. There's a lot of gi to get grip here. Here's your corner here to grip with your right hand. You have your Here's your other hand, your hikite, your pulling hand. So we got angles. We basically, got, how I always like to say, I'm wrapping a rope or a belt around them. That's what I'm doing here, like this. Bam, I've got him in here. So I've got the grip, right? So he's backing off, there's some distance between us. He's relatively safe. He is, actually. But what I'm going to do is make up that distance just by my movement, okay? So when I do this, I'm going to sugar foot, in other words, keep my right foot just slightly on the inside of his foot. I'm not going to get real close to him. Now, if I you know, can be fine, but I'll probably sweep him just like you demoed there. So I'm going to be out here a little bit. See him good space, but notice my foot is not out here. It's here, because this is going to pivot, and it will be using that as a weapon. He will be showing this on Eric in a moment. So he's all bent over here like this. So I'm leading with my right foot, and here's my grip, all right? And what's going to happen is, what's going to happen is I'm going to spin on this foot, and I'm going to spin this back foot very deep. Okay, don't, you know, just, just pass it here, way deep back here. As soon as this foot hits, that's this foot's cue to attack. Okay, so if you feel like this, spin and sweep. It is a pretty pretty quick movement. It's a fast movement. So if you like this, and watch it. And as I do that, I'm going to be pulling him into the direction of the throw. So spin and sweep. See how I'm making up the distance between our bodies with my movement? That's where movement really is essential in good judo, sambo, jiu-jitsu. So if you like this, here we go. And I spin backward, and as soon as that foot is here, let's come here, you can key in on this, on this driving leg, this, is, this support leg here. As soon as that hits back here, bam, kind of parallel to his foot. You don't have to make it super deep, but deep enough that you don't want to be up here and try and do it, because you'll, you'll be out of, out of position. You want to spin around pretty much parallel to his foot. When it's there, then you make the sweep. So I'm going to have Derek do this in a second here on here. If you like this, Pull here as you do now the hands, as you're doing this spin, you're bringing them with you. See how you're just sucking them in. It's just like you're sucking them in like this. And that's what you're doing, you're just spinning, and like that, you're ready to sweep. You're ready to go. Now watch the other leads. Okay, so in, okay. Pull and swing, pivot. On your, on your grip. Again, you don't want to put this great big looping grip over here. When you, when you do your grip on this, don't reach over his shoulder, unless he's really a sucker, you know. But you probably won't go for that. Go around his deltoid, so you catch him here. And somewhere around this side of the back, on this on the side, the left side, the back scapula area here. Lock it in. Now, you don't want to lift your elbow. Keep him sucked in tight, because you, you're literally pulling him into you as you do this, okay? So if you, if you float your elbow up, you might throw them, but it's not as strong as if you suck them in with both hands like this. That's what we were showing you guys. Backing off, there's some distance between us. He's relatively safe. He is, actually. But what I'm going to do is make up that distance just by my movement. Okay? So when I do this, I'm going to sugar foot, in other words, keep my right foot just slightly on the inside of his foot. I'm not going to get real close to him. Now, if, he, if I you know, can be fine, I'll probably sweep him just like you demoed there. So I'm going to be out here a little bit. See him in the space, but notice my foot is not out here. 
it's here because this is going to pivot and it will be using that as a weapon. He will be showing this on Eric in a moment. So he's all bent over here like this. So I'm leading with my right foot. Here's my grip, all right? And what's going to happen is going to What's going to happen is I'm going to spin on this foot. I'm going to spin this back foot very deep. Okay, don't, you know, just, just it has to be good. Way deep back here. As soon as this foot hits, that's this foot's cue to attack. So you like this, and watch. And as I do that, I'm going to be pulling him into the direction of the throw. So spin and sweep. See how I'm making up the distance between our bodies with my movement? That's where movement really is essential in good judo, sambo, jiu-jitsu. So if you like this, here we go. And I spin backward. And as soon as that foot is here, let's come here. Key in on this, on this driving leg. This, is, this support leg here. As soon as that hits back here, bam. Kind of parallel to his foot. You don't have to make it super deep, but deep enough that you don't want to be up here and try and do it because you'll, you'll be out of, out of position. You want to spin around pretty much parallel to his foot. When it's there, then you make the sweep. So I'm going to have Derek do this in a second here on here. If you like this, pull here as you do. Now the hands, as you're doing this spin, you're bringing them with you. See how you're just sucking them in. It's just like you're sucking them in like this. And that's what you're doing. You're spinning, and like that, you're ready to sweep. You're ready to go. Coach was first showing me this move. He really emphasized getting wide with my feet, and that's what really like sold it for me. It's because if you're wide, you're naturally going to come in contact with the leg on the outside and not up the middle. Okay? You're talking about his left leg wide. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This leg pivots up nice and wide so that naturally when you lift that leg it's going to come right up on the knee and the little back. If I go shallowly, I'm coming up on the upper part of the thigh and up the middle. Okay? So shallow, boom, right up the middle. Okay? Wide, right there. And second. There you go. See how quick it is? Get a little slower to parse it down. If you have anything, go ahead. Okay. So, it's almost like I'm, I'm going to swing uh, a hook with the right as I'm moving. Okay. I'll normally be out here on the edge and then a sugar foot in with a, like a little teeny tiny step. And as soon as I get that step, it's go time. You start pull this sucker like you're starting a lawnmower. You swing this side so that he's starting to move, and then it's a big pivot. And right about there where the, the head starts to dip, that's when your other leg on the inside lifts up, and then you just finish with your hands. See, you notice how he finished with control. He stayed up. He didn't need to roll all the way over. I mean, he might have been in a situation you might have to. He might pull you over on, but you're still throwing him. But try to finish like he did with, with good control at the end. Okay, so in, okay, pull and swing, pivot. Notice where he's hitting him on his foot. He's not coming in here way deep. He's kind of hitting shy along here, maybe even low here. Somewhere around here on the inside of his left thigh, with my right foot. With my right leg. So, I'm doing this, there's not a lot of big sweeping up through here. You don't have to do that. It's catching this. That's why I call it the leg style with you on, because you're really attacking his leg. Watch his legs. It looks like he's going up deeper, but boy, he's catching right along here. And that's exactly where he wants it, right along the inside of that thigh. It's, again, it's, it's very good technique because you find a lot of guys bent over. You might find somebody who's really low and squat, kind of, kind of, don't be so defensive, just kind of be, come on, just a second. Yeah, really low base, low like this, he's got a good straight back, he's a pretty strong defensive, but you see how low he is? Well, then he's an ideal candidate for this as well, because he's creating space by his low body, you know, posture, he's like this, and he's going back, and he's just easy to catch with this, right there. So that's why you see this style, Really popular ensemble, wouldn't you say? You've yeah. seen this a lot. You've seen this ensemble, I know. And it, okay. it also works off like if you catch them when they're shooting in. So if they've got a bad shot and you just caught it coming in, you get a hold right over. Yeah, it's really good. It shoots in low. This is a great counter for a shoot. Remember that Ichimata? Traditional, but it's pretty good. Sometimes you're going to catch them if he's very low. You'll catch him low. And, and 
you may not catch him up here, you're going to be catching down here at the low ankle sometimes. So he, he may be, you know, be way out wide, and he's not giving you much. Okay, so you might have to just catch that. You're still going to get a new chimato. So, see, so anywhere along that inside of that leg is is fair game for you. Show it one more time on that really, because again, he may be super low, and that works very well at low one. And we've done that before, and it really is an effective move. Understand? And another thing, guys, for the newer guys, it's a great way to learn in Shimano. Because if you learn it quicker, you'll have better skill with it pretty, pretty much quick right off the bat. Because it's a... It's, it's one, I think it's a really important throw to learn, and some people don't uh, use it a lot. I like it, I think it's really a very, very good throw. Kumi means the, the head or neck area up in this area here. It's not really head, but it's the neck area up here. That's a kubi, and nagi is to throw, okay? And it's basically, there, there's several ways to do it, but the way I like to do it to teach newer guys is it's like, a, it's like part koshiguruma and part tayotoshi. So you can get good at Tayotoshi, and you can get good at Koshiguruma, and it's kind of a two-in-one throw. And I've seen this used a lot in all levels of competitive judo and sambo and everything else, so it's really, really good techniques. So basically, here he is, and you can catch him moving. We're doing stationary, just so you learn the basic skills. Pop him up, a lot of pull here, just like standing like Koshiguruma, you know, Tayotoshi. Pull this, look at the back of your hand like your wristwatch. Pop here, but now this hand, is going to go around the, up here. And if you're a tall guy like me, I'm probably not going to be starting with this grip. I'm going to be starting with the grip back here in between. I've probably got this grip going already. Okay, So that, that's just perfect for this throw. Because now what I can do is I'm pulling him up, I'm lifting this as well, kind of a surigoshi action, lifting, you know, lifting action like this with my hand. Lift him into it, and I can just wrap around here, and I just turn around in front of him, and it's like Tayotoshi. Okay? My legs are wide, my knee is bent here, see my knee pointing down like this. I don't want to be, I don't want that, I don't want to block his knee where I could hurt his knee. I want to be down here, and that's the technique. So just without throwing, just this is where he's balanced, come in, turn around. There's the position, it's hard to hurt, not to start. But that's, that's, the, that's the way you want to look, okay? All right. It's really part Koshi Garuma, part Tayotoshi. The upper part is pretty much Koshi Garuma. Some Tayotoshi, and the bottom part is certainly Tayotoshi. And you want a nice, light, wide legs. And some people, you'll throw this guy in a competition with it, they'll say, wow, that's a great Tayotoshi. Sure, I don't care. <laughs> call, you know, call it what you want, but it works. Can you demo a few times here? So, so watch how he does it. Uh, any group you want, any group you want. Okay, he just pops him up, and he comes in. You know, it's Kubinaki. Derek has a little wider grip, or wider stance. Look at his feet. Well, watch his feet when he comes in. Come in. See that? Turn around so you can show the camera. See that? Now, some guys will have a narrower stance in their Tayotoshi, that they're, they're like, they may have a closer end. Yeah, they're, they're from like that. That's your preference. Some guys will have a real wide split, like Mike, Mike Pennington has a really wide split, works really well for him. So that split, how, how you split under him, is totally up to you. Just as long as you do the very important things, your knees are flexed, and we like to have about a 50-50 ratio. Some people like to have a 70 weight percent here, 30 percent here. If that works fine, do that. But generally we do more 50-50 split, because I can get more flex in it, more spring into it. So when he throws, here's the Tayotoshi part of it coming in. Watch how he uses his leg. He springs up like that. So the hands are using quite a bit. It's got that element of Tayotoshi in it, but he's also got around the neck it's the element of Koshiguruma. So it's a little bit of Koshiguruma, a little bit of Tayotoshi, Kubinani, okay? And it works quite well. Um, do that one more time and just show the hand action. Just see how he lifts his hand, just hands up here, and he's lifting, and he's lifting in here, spins around, there it is. Could be nine. All right? I had to throw it one more time. It was <laughs> Eric. But that, that's, uh, I think, a fundamental skill, guys. And if you get good at that, you can easily do, more easily do Tayotoshi, more easily do Koshiguro. And 
we'll look it in. Okay. And for the taller guys, especially when you're fighting somebody that's smaller than you, having a standard kumikani grip isn't always. That's a good. Let's just point that out. This is. I'm tall. I, I, a lot of guys I would compete with were his size or shorter. Okay, and, and some guys would be bent over. If he's all bent over, like some of these guys, like Sambo we see or BJJ or something, they're all bent over anyway. Kubinagi is ideal for this, okay? Because you're not really doing so much kubinagi now around the neck, but you're grabbing here, down here, and you're, it's kind of a Tayotoshi and kubinagi combination, but you're coming in, and it's the same thing, but see how I'm pulling here to turn around. See, I'm pulling here like this, like this, instead of here. That's fine. That's fine because then I can still get this action. So if you want to call it Tayotoshi, do so. It could be Kubinagi because I'm still kind of controlling his neck too. Can you do that one please bent over? Yeah, sure. So if the guy is bent over, see how you get that grip way down deep there? And you just come in and launch him. It's perfect. It's perfect. This is, I think, an ideal throw to teach juniors, kids, judo. One time I was driving down the street. And I saw a couple of kids wrestling in the front yard. There was just four, two boys wrestling. And, you know, I don't know if they might have done judo, but they sure didn't seem like... They naturally did kubinagi. They were throwing each other with this exact throw. And, you know, just in their street clothes, just on the yard there. And, uh, and looked, I said, well, those kids are doing some pretty good judo. And it was just like kubinagi. And I probably never had a judo lesson in my life, but it's kind of a natural movement. And it seems to work. Okay. Let's go get them. All right, let's try. Two. Guys, let's just do a few points on the uh, Kubinagi. That it, it, here's where throws kind of blend. You could say, well, now it's more of a Tayotoshi, okay, but with a, with a different grip. Um, we, we talked about this before. A lot of times you'll be finding guys, even in Rondori, they'll be bent over, okay. Now, there are different reasons for him being bent over. You know, he may be a real low slung Sambo guy. That he has a good straight back and good posture. My God, that's, he's lowered himself, so it's harder for me to get him. Some guys are just bent over because they don't know any better. You know, they just have more bad posture, okay? So that happens. But if whatever happens, he's bent over, okay, however it may be. Now, I've got to get my, my hand over his shoulder or around his deltoid to control him. So that's really important. So when we're fighting here and I'm doing this, you know, I may rip here, but my key thing, I want to get this. And I'm going to get a handle here. Here's my anchor here. And hold that here, okay? Now we're fighting, gripping, whatever. Get this, and there it is. If a guy's bent over, often he's probably not real strong gripping, you know, grip fighting, like in a judo or sambo sense. So you could probably get this grip reasonably uh, well. But here's my grip here. Maybe grab lower to the belt if he's super bent over. We'll talk, we may work on that. But I, I, I've got to get a handle here. See, like this? And just kind of where the... The apron starts beating the, the heavy part of the judo game. All right, that's a good place to get him right there. There's your handle. Now we're working here, and he's low. Now, I'm going to use this a lot more like a surigoshi, a lifting hip throw, but I'm going to do tayotoshi as well. So I may even, my grip here may be even really low down on the sleeve. I'd like to get it here, but if not, it, it may be work better for me here. So play with the grip down here. So basically, we've always talked about this like, putting a belt over a guy and looping him with a belt or a rope, that's what I'm doing here. So here's like this, and I've got him here, and I've got him here. And he's bent over, and he's more concerned with doing something else than, you know, thinking about me throwing him with this. And notice he's already, he's got his hand posted here. You know, he's probably, this is a pretty defensive posture for him, okay? And what this does, I can spin on this hip, I may turn my hip into a nice kubinagi, tayotoshi type throw, with this type of a dominant grip, this back grip, okay? And so I've got this back grip, so from here, and you can see he's pushing out there. He may or may not be doing that, but a lot of times the guy will be doing it, or even having a grip back here. That allows me to just, I get that rotation and can turn. So when I do this, as I, as I pull him, I start pulling him into me. I don't need to lift him up anymore. I just need to suck him into me, okay? So here's a little bit different if you've got a bent over opponent then somebody who's stand up and you're doing this instead of the standard kubinagi, okay? So just pull him into you. Just pull his shoulder into your gut area, your rib area here. Just suck him in tight like this. And I spin around and shoot. So it's, it's kind of like I'm spinning him, I'm turning him here and locking him onto my armpit area here, my upper torso with his shoulder. 
and I'm spinning on this, and as I do that, I'm continuing to pull in this direction. Okay? So I'm just coming here like that. And ready to, I keep pulling this way. Both hands are working at the same time. Can you do one here? Okay. Watch how both his hands work, and they're pulling in the direction. Just like that. Is that supposed to stay put? No, you're good. You're good. Do it again, parcel the part. Watch yeah. when he comes in. He's got that grip. This hand is going to be pulling in, as this hand is pulling in the direction there. He's not necessarily lifting, but he's pulling into it. Right. He is slightly here. That's, that's how he does. That's fine. But now, notice the thing. He's going to pivot on that, spin about, and shoot. There it is. If you want to call it Kubinagi, call it Kubinagi. If you want to call it Tayotoshi, call it Tayotoshi. Just as long as they call it Ipon, right? Okay, that's all we ask for. Right, so from that direction, see the grip? Right in there. I always, when I'm going and I'm worried about grabbing something back here, I'll slap first and then crunch in. Because then you know even if it's a nice tight gi, you can get a hold of something. If you start trying to do this, your grip fails, okay? That's why you hear people slap. Yeah. That's exactly the reason a guy slaps you on the back to get that grip. Get that grip. Okay, lots of surface area, crunch it back in on your grip. You've got a good hold there, okay? Pull them in nice and tight, okay? Just right in, just like he's a band or something and you're, you're practicing your, your Uchi Kones. Hit it nice and wide, and then as you do, you're gonna kind of drop down a couple inches and kick that foot across. And over he goes. So most people would probably call that Taiyotoshi, just with a, with a strong back. Again, call it what you want. It's a very effective technique. But it's Kubi Nagi. We'll come back after and get there. One or two more times to sort of be a little bit right. You see it? Good. Any questions? You notice it was a little, show that don't have to throw, but show that how to set up the Kubi Nagi initially. There's more of a pulling action on a Kubi. So go ahead and stand nice oh, right. so, he, so he's doing a Kubi Nagi where he's going to grab around the, the higher here around the neck. And notice it's more of a, a lifting action with the hand here. So it's, it's more of a hip throw than kubinagi, and you're rolling him in, but then you're splitting him out. So in kubinagi, you might throw him both over your legs and your hips. It could be either way. Tayotoshi is more over the legs. Again, personal preference, everybody does it slightly different, okay? A really nice knee drop, say nine here, shoulder throw. This is geared to really low grapplers. Like you see this a lot in Sambo. We're, we're practicing Sambo tonight, so this is what you're going to see a lot in Sambo because they have a really low position, low profile one here. And judo is a little more upright. Okay, you might see this in BJJ or some other type, you know, submission grappling. But the guys are really low. Okay, and this is why you don't want to be, you know, bent forward if you're victim or the guy getting thrown at Uki, if you're the guy, because then don't do it wrong. If he's low here, look, you know, like Matt Lindland was saying at the Sambo Summit, here's a point, it's like a pyramid. There's a point, there's a point, here's his head. So he's created an opening with his hips being shallow and back, or, you know, far away, and his weight distribution is too far forward, or back, but in this case forward, okay? So he's really asking to be thrown. And now he might be quite good, he's here just and I might set him up, but I want to get him to, I got to get the right angle here so to really set him up. Usually in, in knee drop, say, I, say I, I like to grab this. I always did the one arm style where I come in here, do the knee drop. That was great for judo, and I've done it in sambo as well. But in this case, when a guy's really low slung like this, it's really hard to do this style. You can, but it's too close to the context, too short of a grip, as we say in sambo. I want a longer grip. So when we're fighting here, we're fighting, I want to get this sleeve here as low as I can, right here. Okay, so I'll right at the, you know, you get pistol grip, you don't need to really, just hold it low. So you want a really nice long grip, and we're working here, and the best angle I can get, if I can, if he's leading with his left, I'm leading with my right, we're opposite positions now. And work around, you know, in, in, in the course of a match or something, you're gonna be working around, just here's my opportunity, okay? Now, I want this sleeve here because if he pulls it back, I can set right in and nail it, even tighter. But, probably won't, 
he'll probably stay low and he'll probably keep it there. See like that? Now, he's giving me an alley to swing into, right? Now, I like the one-arm style. Some of you may do a double or a far lapel, whatever you like. I like a one-arm style. So I like this to get slow. It's one of the rare times I like to do a semi-nagi or, or shoulder throw type throw with a sleeve grip like this. This is one of those times. So see how I'm through here? Right, now what's going to happen, I'm just going to swing right under and, and just drive right in. So we come in here, boom, super deep, and follow through, okay? So you want to create that alley to hit with. Now, if you're a knee dropper, I know, you know I was, my wife was, Derek is, Sandy was filming, to hit a lot of people with knee drops. Um, Anne Maria DeMar is a good friend of ours, she's a knee dropper. A lot of times they'd come out of this, and I just roll them like that. Key to remember, always remember, if I'm throwing over my right side, my knees to the left, my butt to the right. You see, I'm driving. Don't flop and drop. The worst thing I can do is flop and drop. I do not want you to do this, especially from this attack. Don't come in here and go. Oh, he's got me. Okay? So if you flop and drop, a lot of people teach that, and frankly, I don't think that's correct. It's not efficient. You saw what happened to me if I flopped and dropped. So we're working here, working here. Let me have this grip, part of the grip fighting process, okay? And my goal now, I want to create an alley here. So I may work over here a bit. There we go. You know, and he before he reacts, I got to hit in there. I got to swing in. So see this? As I do this, this kind of pulls just like this. Doesn't pull down. Don't try to pull up. It just pops. Just pop it. In the back of your wrist. When I come in, super deep. I like this one arm type setup. When you do this, do not come over the shoulder. I'm done. Okay? So lock it. One more time. Here, I work around. Bam. There's my alley. Now watch. When I swing in, there you go, wham, right into it. So it's a very efficient way, and it's a good technique. High percentage, high ratio of success. If you need points, it would be Sambo, Judo, whatever, it's really good. Now in a Noki situation, he's like this, just grab the wrist. Just take the wrist, okay? All right, take his hand. The wrist is better. But we got a jacket, let's use it. It's a great tool to handle. So again, you come straight in, but not right now. He, if he's wary, he's smart. A lot of guys will lead with a foot. They'll sugar foot with one foot or the other, okay? If he's sugar footing there, I'm thinking, okay, I'll have to, what I'll have to do is square him back up. Okay. So, so, so yeah, sugar foot there is a sugar. So if he's there, and he's leading me, if he's a righty and I'm a righty, okay, what I'm gonna do from here, I'm just gonna adjust the front, and then I'm gonna dive straight in. See, it's a matter of angles. It's really a matter of angles. Kind of like, you know, thinking in a person's chest, you know, physical chest like that. Jared Vogt. Was that? Jared Vogt. Jared Vogt. So, I thought somebody else had it too, but I know Jared Vogt who sit along with us too. But if he's here, I'm here, now, I can pop in and go, okay? Often, he'll lead with the one side, I'll lead with the other, or I may get it, or if he's a square, a square up guy, I'll come to the side here, I got it. If I can get in here, he's, he's gone, okay? One more time, so just create that, got that alley, that hole there. I swing under, and there we go. Wham. And follow through the ground. Get the points, and get your hold. Go right into a, what's that call me for judo? A holding for sambo. It's for time. We good? Let's give it a shot. This has come up a lot of frequency. We see more and more in like uh, Sambo, you'll see this, and, and BJJ guys are real bent over. We're seeing this a lot in Judo today, too. You know, any type of a game grappling sport where they're doing this. So Mike is bent over, he's defensive, he's, he's trying to avoid, okay? All right, now, so Derek wants to throw him. He wants to get him down, he wants to score points. So what we're gonna do, it, in this position, We've kind of worked on this lately, where you've got this real crash low opponent, and it might be difficult for Derek to get up and get a hold of a lapel, 
control the shoulders, to control the hips better. That might be tough. So he's going to have to settle for a longer grip. This is where the, the idea of a long grip or a real, real far, far out grip with a double sleeve type thing is really effective. So he's going to get at the very low sleeves here. If he can get, you know, the, uh, the, what do you call it, the uh, uh, pistol grip, you can get that. Or you just get a, get a low grip, whatever you can get, but get at the ends. Okay, there. Now. Turn around this way so that we can camera here, so we'll see here. So there, the camera. Okay, good. Now, what's going to happen is, is Mike doesn't want. He's being defensive. He doesn't want Derek to approach him. So Derek's going to have to create just enough of an opening that he's going to be able to slide in to get a knee drop throw on. It's a, it's a, a sode sleeve knee drop seoinagi type throw. You're still carrying him over the back, so it's still a seoinagi to carry over the back. So watch what he does. So it's here. Now, very quickly, now if Derek were to do this wrong and pull, Mike would know it's, he, he'd get out, right? So you don't want to pull and make it a big deal. Don't make a big deal of it. That's the key thing. With this hand, his right hand, he's going to, as he's going to step with his right foot across, just enough. If Derek, step with your right foot across as you step in. Boom, just enough that. Now, don't pull it too much too high. Even if you can keep it fairly low, so he knows that, okay? Now, now, Mike, if he's really resisting, he'll make, he may even like back out or whatever. That still that opens it up even more for Derek. Okay. So what we want to do here, Derek's going to slide his wrist across, both double sleeve, as he's going to really attack. Now he's not going to make a big move here. He's just going to move it across there. See that opens everything up there. That's all he needs to come in and do his knee drop. Okay. Go ahead and swing in your knee down from there. Boom. There you go. That's all he needs. See that little bit of room. Then he opened it up with that little bit of movement to the right. Okay? So you can see here, he's got this grip. He moves it just enough, swings it over. Now that, even if Mike were to cut away or start away, he still opened it up enough where he doesn't need to do anything but spin in and take him right over with a double sleeve, saying, I need to Now this isn't a shoulder throw that sends, but remember, Sayoi needs to carry over or across the back. That's exactly what this is. And that's a big body slam right there. He's doing a nice good practice here. Okay. Kind of start to turn around the other direction. He stays to keep the camera there. Now watch how he does it. He swings in. Bam. But you see, it's a very, very subtle thing, guys. If he made a big deal, let me, let me have Mike. If I made a big deal of this and tried to pull up on Mike, He's not stupid. He's backing out, or he's going to counter. He's going to do something. He's going to pull his wrist away. He's going to do something. Okay. So what I have to do is be very, very subtle when I'm doing this. It's just a little quick shot. Okay. My wife, when she did this, well, this is one of the ways she would set people up for this throw. This is a very nasty throw. Which her point was that she would drive us under. Okay. Remember that, Sandy? Oh, yeah. Okay. So what she would do, she said, the reason I drove it under was, yeah, to get under here to trap it. But she said it always opened up the near hip. She said that's all I needed. And, again, one of our good athletes who made some time back, Warren Frank, did the same type of thing. He did more of a step. He stepped across like this and then swing under and catch it. you got to make it work for you. But the idea here is what Derek was doing was this Double sleeve grip, very low. Don't get up here, it's got to be very low. And it's a subtle move, just a little step, and just a little move here. Like I said, Becky swung it under because she trapped both of them. Can you do this without hurting the guy? You know, Mike says, oh, wonderful. Swing under like that. See how he trapped him under? Becky threw a number of women with that in his career, both judo and samba. She swung under like that. They had nothing to break fall with or stop the throw with, and that was the point. But the other point was it opened that side of the hip to let them out. Does that make sense to everybody? It's a very subtle move, and it's very, it, it really is done, it's very, when they're really low, when they're very low and avoiding you, they think their hips are safe. Well, you're just opening it up enough, and you're pulling it in and spinning in. And one more time, we'll finish and let you guys practice. So he's very low, he shifts it across, wham. 
you see how big it's a big throwing movement. It, no matter what weight class, it can be middle weights, light weights, heavy weights, light heavies like you guys down here. Any weight class, it really does work. It's a very athletic move. Okay, so expose that hip, double sleeve grip, very low grip, or very low sleeve grip, you got it, okay? It's Sode, uh, you call Sode Sirikomi Goshi off the knees, Sode Sirinagi off the knees, whatever you want, whatever you call it, call it your pawn, all right? There you go. Okay, let's work on it, guys. Side moving, oh soda. Yes, great point. And a lot of times when we, you know, when we're fighting and gripping, I, if I can get him to stay, take one step with me, I probably got him. You know, so we're fighting against. I get this grip, and in the, in the process of getting all the setup happen here, I'm actually stepping once, and that helps me get there. And I get it. It's a lateral side moving attack. It's not straight back. There's, and again, one of my great coaches, Renee Pomerell, always taught me. He said, your balance is easily broken laterally. It's harder to break front and back. It's easier to break this direction, even more so than the corners. Sideways, you're really weak, because we don't have a lot of stabilizers there to keep us upright. It's the way we're built. So let's take advantage, biomechanically, of the human body at its weakest points. Okay, so we're gripping before we can, we're, con we're making fighting here and everything. My goal is this. I want to get close to him, and we'll talk about this Later this morning when we talk about gripping and all this stuff, you'll we'll see a little more of this come into play. But I want to get my right hand around his deltoid here, grab him in the back. I want this. Okay? Even if I'm the same size or shorter, I don't want to reach over his back. He'll block that and he'll send me to, you know, can come. But when we're fighting here, I want to get my hand around here. Okay? That's my anchor. That's an anchor hand. So we're gripping here, we're gripping here. How do I get? I get this. There it is. Now when you do this, look at this grip, guys. See this? I'm not grabbing this way. I'm not grabbing in here. Okay? Grabbing here. And look at my elbow. I'm locking him down. I'm not just gripping with my hands. I'm using my whole arm and shoulder. And elbow and shoulder. So I'm doing this. I'm trying to cinch him in. And he, he knows it. I want to square my shoulders back up. I want to do what I call kill his shoulder. Make his shoulder dead. It means useless to him. That's what we're doing here, okay? Now, we're like this. I've got this grip, and he, he knows he's in some trouble here. I, at this point now, I can, whatever hand I use here is my, my pulling hand. It could be the sleeve, it could be his lapel I grip. If it's his lapel you grip, remember, he can stick his arm out, so you really have to slam it. So don't really do that in each other. Don't reach your hand out if you don't want you to get hurt. Don't stick your arm out. Don't stick your arm out when you get hurt, okay? It will break, it will break, the arm will break. So, I've got this. Now, let's watch this. We're still kind of squared up here, aren't we? Okay? With my elbow, I'm starting to heat it. Pull your elbow down and suck it in. Okay? Now, here's Samba. All right, now, with this hand, now see how my hips are? They're fairly close. I'm not out here. Yeah, oh, I'm in trouble now. I'm, I'm here. So, my right elbow and my left hip are working together. My right hip are working together. Now, look. See how I'm in proximity? Pretty close to him. Now, I'm going to quickly grab his look at the sleeve. Let's say grab his sleeve. Don't grab too low. I want to grab up here so I can suck his arms in. I want to do this. I want to pretend I'm wrapping him with my belt or a rope. I'm doing this with the belt, sucking him in. See how my elbows come in? I want this to happen. I don't want to do this. I could maybe make that work. But I'm giving him too much room to attack me. I want to break his posture this way, right? Now, look, just look, watch the, and his, his balance is pretty well broken from this point. Now watch what I'm gonna do, watch my hips here, and feet. I'm, my right hip turns just slightly. See how I was here, squared up, you see this? And turn, okay, okay. So here, just turn, see that toe? That's the direction he's gonna go in. Now watch, now, I'm not way back here where I have to reach across there, he'll counter me. Right? You notice I started squared up? Turn. Now look at my hip. How close my hip is to him. I want to be really, almost touch him if you can. I want to pull him to me. You want to suck his body to you. In judo gripping theory, we want to lift and pull, which really works great. This is more of a standard sambo gripping theory, 
where I want to suck them into me and throw them. See a little different, subtle differences there? So, okay. suck them in. Now I turn. Now when I come across the body, I'm going to point my toe, and I'm going to hook right across the... I don't want to go whack and jack his knee up. Always point with your toe. You know, think of yourself in ballet. Can you see the bit of tutu? I can see that. Cute, right? Oh yeah. All right. But turn and come across. It's a hooking motion. We call osoto gari in Jew. Gari means to reap. Gaki means to hook. This is really what the Brits years ago started calling, probably everybody else, osoto gaki. Major out of hook. An osoto gari would come here, it would be a high reaping motion. That's a gari. And there's a difference. We need to know these things. And this is a gaki motion. So if you want to call it osogaki, feel free. Like it, I don't care what you call it, just call it a pawn. Okay? All right. So here we are. We're fighting. Right hand. You start with your right hand. Suck it in. Okay? All right? Now, I'm close enough. I don't want to be out here. I want to make sure. Now I'm thinking my right elbow and right hip are connected. So I want to get some proximity here, pretty close proximity. Like that. Now I start to grab here. And when you grab, don't grab too low because he could pop the pop free. I lost. Now you gotta start again. So suck it up here. You need to grab it here. A lot of guys, the Sambo gap jackets are so tight, there's usually a little gap here. Guys will grab here. But look, in, in any event, I'm pulling a belt over him and I'm wrapping him into me. Elbows in. See the elbow? Don't do this. Elbows in. Now, it's a quick turn with the body, and I suck him into me. See how he came to me like this, right here? He's, I got him. Now when I, I hook, don't, not with the heel, the toe. Anchor hand, ties him up, come across, boom. Sorry about that. Roll over him, because he wants to be nice to him, right? If you were in a fight, would you roll over? You could, I'll land on him, and guess what? He's your crash pad. I'm sorry about that. I know it's not nice to say, but practice, throw, crash, and roll so you save his body. Step across. That's what would happen. All right. Let's, try, let's go. Good, good. Partner. really natural combination because what you're doing is using his momentum and movement to defeat him. He hops away and you really change directions. Okay, so it's a really change direction uh, combination throw as opposed to a continuation. So he come, hops. Now, some of you may like Tomonagi, but we found really that Sumigeshi works so well because once you use that right leg to come out, and he, you, you, you're trying to hook him with your right leg. So do it real slow there. See how I hook? And he hops away, plant, and you can come in and hook that leg in just as easily there. And you set in and you roll back and toss him. So it's real. Let's do that again. So it's a cross body. Osoto. He hops away, gets away, step. Now, did you guys notice he had to put his foot on the mat? So Derek was attacking with his right leg. But he had to reset basically to get his balance. And this is, you will do this, you'll do it quick. Hops, steps, step in, and you shoot the move. And so don't try to keep your foot flailing around up in the air. It doesn't work that way. Okay? Well, let's do one more and then we'll let you guys practice. So you just go crossbody, Osoto, he hops away, steps in, boom. You can Do this. I'm, I'm putting you on the spot, but you've done it before in competitions. A coach and he steps away. So if you if you want to play with that, so Derek may hit a coachy and he hops away and set up like that. So some of you guys like that inside leg trip, coach Yugari, minor inner reap. Uh, you might want to try that. So show that one more time if the guys do want to practice it, and we'll have it here. So coachy, 
And see, the, the same principles apply, everybody, is because after he tried that kochi, he didn't just leave it in the air and swing around with it. He planted and he used it now as his attacking leg again. He kind of doubled up on his attacking leg. One more time, kochi to sumigation, and we'll, we'll let you off the hook. Kochi, sumigeishi. There you go. So it's a real nice fluid combination technique of one throw, one specific throw into another specific throw, and actually changing directions. So in this case, instead of a lateral or side direction, and then you switch into a really rear direction. Okay, want to try it? Uh, you can call it Soto Makakomi or O Soto Makakomi. You know, uh, Soto means outer, Makakomi means to wind or to wrap into something. Uh, you can call it that, or O Soto Makakomi means your outer winding. Or you can call it O Soto Gari or O Soto Gaki. No matter what you call it, call it Ipon. Okay, it's a, it's, it's a big, it's a big, we like that big boom. So we're going to start with a Georgian grip. Okay, so uh, why don't you turn around so Mike can see that Georgian grip. Now, when we do a Georgian grip, Derek is going to be doing it here on Eric. He's going to, yeah, use the sleeve version. Of this. He use the sleeve version of it. He's got his left hand on the sleeve, everybody. With the right hand, he comes over Eric's right shoulder, grabs the belt or part of the gi, the jacket there, but the belt's the best thing you can grab now. What? Here's the thing. He's not pulling like in Japanese style judo. This is a sambo throw. He's chucking everything in. He's pulling his, squeezing his elbows in, his elbows in. And what he's doing, he's parking Eric there. And he can really dominate him. He can take him over sideways and snap. You can do a lot of stuff from here. This is a very powerful grip. And it comes from Samba. And the Georgians use this quite a bit in there because they're very good Samba. Now, you got this. And what we're going to do is simply, he's going to stand sideways. He's going to step sideways and going to hit a crossbody Osota guard. Wham. And when, he was nice to him. He would really unload on him in a real situation. No, it depends on him, you know, does he owe you money, you know, whatever. All right. no. Don't read Thursday. <laughs> All right, so get your Georgian grip. Now this, I will say this, everybody, the Georgian grip coming out of the good side, you'll get a lot of guys like in Sambo competitions, some of you guys do Sambo, he may be really low slung. You may have it in BJJ or in, sometimes it was even in Judo, some guys fight really low. This is a really good grip for those people who are really low slung type fighters. He's got his grip here. He's going to come over to the near stand. When he does, he's not going to make a big looping grip. He's going to be real economical with his move. He's going to slide right over and catch it. So you have um, that elbow is important. He sinks it in. Now, what he's going to, as soon as he does that, he's going to step sideways directly and hit with that Osota guard. And right over. Okay. Now, that's directly to the side. It, they're very weak sideways, laterally, balance wise. That's why we like to do it sideways initially. Okay? If for some reason you have to step back, so kind of come around the angle here. So if you're like this, then Derek's going to like, yeah, angle here so you throw it. Okay. If it's if you have to take a step back, so kind of square up with him a little bit. And for whatever reason, Derek may have to step back on a 45 degree angle. And as soon as he does, he can catch. And now it's going to be more of a big whipping. Now it's more of an Osoto Makakomi, a big Harai Makakomi. Call it what you want, okay? If you go by any name, just call it Kong. See, it's a bigger throw. Because what did he do? And I'm not going to throw you, but look how the step, once you get here, you get your Georgian grip, you got all this. Instead of stepping sideways directly and catching, it's back here and a turn. And then sweep. That's the difference. It's just a, a little slight back step and a turn. Get good at both of them because you never know how he'll move on you. That's a big going to the car. Okay? Do the first one, do the side lateral, the, the lateral cross body action. And get good at that. That's easier to learn. By the way, it has a very high ratio of success. It really works well. Um, I the first year I went to Samba Nationals and Clark and got that very rough. <laughs> you know, and uh, he landed on and only got four points. Judo would have been like a quadruple if Paul had landed so hard on a wrestling mat, which was really cool. And the guy was good. He was really good, too. And But 
you only got four points and he went right into the hole and got more four more, so it's really good for Samba. But the second one is more of a big Harai, Makakomi, Soto Makakomi type thing, but starting with the Georgian grip. Get good at these two things and we're gonna come back, just a slight variation, and then we'll do some other stuff. So get good at this, you'll definitely will be trash bags for everybody. This is not one you take on a regular time. Go we'll get it. things he thinks that I'm going to do is kind of a Soto Makakomi type move uh, if I grab here. Okay, he may think it's coming on the other side, but if I get this grip here, whether it's over the top or under the bottom, the fact is he may think he's dominating me here and he's, he's beating my grip and I've got this lapel here, okay? All right, what I want to do is just come over the side and I'm going to trap him, trap him and catch him and throw him with a Harai Makakomi, Soto Makakomi type thing, a Makakomi throw. A lot of times this is very, very good if a guy's bent over and he may be a style maybe a Sambo guy or a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy or he may just have the lead and he's just bent over, okay? So come on, here's the thing. And he's bent like this. And I've got this, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide over either around the deltoid, whichever works for you better, or just slide down to the top. Don't go leaping over here because he, he'll launch me, okay? You don't, want, you don't want to see that. So come in here like this, and we're going to come slide around here and catch it. And if you can catch his belt, even better. Okay? Now see what I've got up in here? I've got this, and I've got this, and I'm sucking it into my shoulder. Right, to my armpit, I should say. His shoulder is in my armpit. When I feel that in there, I know it's time to make the turn and do a sweeping, kind of a Harai Makakomi type move. Can you do all that? Because that's one of your things you do. Can you come over here and we can all take a look at this? parse it out here real quick for so so Max got now you notice he didn't grab the lapel he grabbed the armpit that's cool too anywhere you get a pocket in here he wants to control the shoulder that's the point of this he's controlling the shoulder first it's a real close grip situation okay all right so we've got that going and when he, when he comes over he's going to come over the near side catch that belt now he doesn't have to do a lot of big turning movements or hooking he just doesn't quite turn with the hips and as he does he'll rotate Throw Eric over with a Harai Makakomi type move. Quite, quite nice. Very, very high rate of success on this throw. This is a really, really good one. And the reason it works is, is because you're really tying up the shoulder. Even if you were to see, sense it coming, you're trying to does a cut away or block away, you know, hit block or something, you're trying to move away. He's still stuck at the shoulder. And you're really kind of controlling it's this hip when you do. So just turn away slightly with like hip block. No problem, it's like something. Hit block this Bam, yeah. see that? Max still got it. So you know, and if Max just keeps rolling and winding, he's still got the throw. So he's really stuck. Okay, that's why you want to control that shoulder and you're going to come along and you're basically isolating this whole side of his body from doing this, guys. So there it is, see like that? And he turns and he throws. Now the actual throw itself is just, you know, nice, right. Makakomi type throw, or like Yoshi basically. Okay? So let's look at that and just parse that together. So when he comes in, gets that, everything's here. See, he's in our pit. And when he turns, it's just a turn. Let's look at how he sweeps. Look at that other way. And he points the toe and he sweeps. And there you go. Harai, Yoshi. We used to call it the monster grip and the near side monster grip because you are gripping them like a monster. You know, that's, when I was coaching kids, we called it that. And I still have adults calling it the monster grip, you know, but it's really a near side back grip is what it is because you're controlling it back. Start, the shoulder, and this. Now, he could have grabbed here, but he's got better control up here, and he, he could do that too. That works fine. But what we're doing is we're kind of throwing him off balance here. He doesn't think a Harai Makakomi, a, a Soto Makakomi type throw is coming from this direction. And when you do that, reach over and trap. And then make your turn. Rotate and throw. Okay. And a lot of you guys have a good Harai move. And this lends directly well. And you show it okay to do this? Okay, can you demo it? So you you throw, I'll throw back or yeah. okay. Now here's a guy who isn't taller than Mac. Here's 
Here's a middleweight, Derek. And he's about the same size as Eric, okay? And what he's doing, he's going to approach it slightly different. He may not reach over the shoulder much. He may reach more around the deltoid. It's, it's totally up to him, you know, and, and how, how deep the guy's bent over also. So if he's really bent over, you can reach over and catch it, and there you go. It's the same thing, okay? So you've got a different body type doing that. You can see it doesn't matter what size you are. It works for tall guys and short guys, too. It works both. Same thing, different body type throw. That's all it is. You can work other throws from there, but the Harai Makakomi really works well. That the sweeping outside sweeping throw, you can do Uchimata from there too. But the higher rate of success is the Makakomi, that the sweeping Harai type, Harai Goshi type. We good? We're going to work on a uh, double sleeve grip on a straight line movement in Okuriyashi Burai, send after a sliding foot sweep. And we got Derek and Eric here. And we're going to start with a two step approach, then we'll do a one step approach. Uh, You're grabbing a normal kumikata, normal grip, and so that's the standard grip we would use when doing a kuriashi barai in many cases, or a variation of that. But in this case, we're, we're going to kind of fool the guy, and we're going to use a double sleeve grip, okay? And most people don't think about a sliding foot sweep or any type of a foot sweep when you grip them with a double sleeve, especially a low double sleeve like Derek's doing right now with Eric, okay? Why don't you... Keep, yeah, there you go. About a half a step, sorry, you're about a half step behind, okay? And he's got the double sleeve grip. And Derek, you're going to move to your right, aren't you? Okay. And basically, let's do it a two step so you get the, the timing down. Step, step, and sweep. So step, step, sweep. Bam, there we go. Okay, and I'll get another view from this angle here. And you can see that we're, when he does this, step, step, sweep, and there's the angle. Okay, keep staying this way, guys. We've got a good view here. Um, so the double sleeve grip, and now we want to, when practicing any sliding foot sweep action, a kuriashi or any type of a foot sweep movement, Eric will, you want to let your partner, if you're Uki, the person receiving the technique, let Tori, the attacker, bring your ankles together. So when he does the foot sweep, in other words, don't like cop out and sweep. Yeah, don't, don't put your foot in front of the other one. No, no, in front of, yeah. So swing that, don't do that, okay? Because that throws the timing off. In learning these techniques, you have to be a good partner, a good uki. So let him bring your ankles together because that's exactly what he wants to do, that, that type of movement there. So let's do the double, double action again, two, two steps and go step, step, sweep, bam. Again, People don't think you're going to do a foot sweep if you have a double sleeve grip. It's just not a common grip for that. Now, get your timing down where you do that. Okay, you got step, step, sweep. That's very nice. Really, very few people are, um, you know, like willing or, you know, once, very rarely will they take two steps with you, in other words. Okay, so let's practice. Once you get the double step down, let's just go one step and sweep. So step and sweep. Bam. Okay, there we go. Now, Derek, when you when you do this, when you when you do your sweep, and because you're doing it naturally with your right foot, you know you point your toe out. Can you exaggerate that? Yeah. Can you exaggerate that movement this time? Okay. So when he steps on the one sweep, that gives his him room to move his hip and foot sweep. See how he did that? He can move his now by stepping his right foot out to the side. He can sweep real deeply with his left hip and leg. If you just stood sideways, stand sideways, and you just kind of restrict your movement when you do that standing sideways, yeah, that it just kind of restricts the movement. So step open and sweep. That's a key point in any foot sweep when you do that, okay? If, and if, if you play golf, it's opening your hips up. To very good point. Through, okay, it's the same idea from baseball. You know, let your hips lead and you can follow through. You're opening your hips up so that that foot can slide all the way through. Very good. Range of your That's a really good analogy. Can you show that again and again? Now you notice also on this foot sweep, and because it is a double sleeve grip, you are extended. Generally, in a foot sweep, you're a little closer to your opponent, 
But in this case, you're not. And so this is where he thinks he's safe from a foot sweep. He's thinking maybe a big forward body throw or something like that, like a you know, knee drop, so they say komigoshi or so they say anagi. But in this case, you're going to foot sweep him. So you get, that's why your timing needs to be good. And you need to open that hip so you can use the full length of your hip and leg to throw. Okay? So look at it again. And you step and sweep. And that's it. And, you know, we're being, these are both good black belts here. And, and he's throwing them, he's controlling them all the way down. If in practice, if you're learning this, let him go ahead and sweep them and let him have one hand free so he can do a break fall. Yeah, if you're learning it, that's a good way to learn it. But as you get better and you can control the movement and, and how hard you throw, you notice in this, Derek, you're not throwing Eric real hard. You don't need to. We're working on timing. Yeah. If you needed to, you would. Yeah. But again, it's, if you can control how soft you can throw them, you can control how hard you can throw them. And okay. for this one especially, it's a, a very easy way to really slam the guy. The double lapel variation and the double sleeve variation, because as soon as you get the guy up here, you can literally shove his torso down. So you, not only does he have his full weight going down about three or four feet, you know, flat, but you're going to push him a little bit on top of that and really clock him one. Really, really clock him, yeah. And, and, and again, tie up guys, let's do the two-step two one. Again, we, we recommend start out two, step, step, sweep. You get your timing down, okay? And if you're, if, but if you're a good foot sweeper already, then just go with a one step and hit because that's really what's going to happen. Oh, you went one yeah, step. just do that. Just go to the one step. Yeah, just go to one step. That's more likely what you're going to be doing. Very few people are willing or dumb enough to take more than one step with you. They, they, he may step with you a little bit to see where you're going, and all of a sudden you clock him with that foot sweep. And yeah. the, the better you get at the, the single step, the more you're able to do things like the single legged hop in uchimata. You know, bang, doesn't work, bang, doesn't work, hop in, spooch him out of the guy, or, you know, bang, step through and tie Toshi. It just, it lends itself to so many other things that need one step rather than two or three. Right, right. And another thing we do want to notice, mention here, when we do, at least we approach it here at Welcome Mat, we don't use a lot of lifting action with the hands. We tend to think of, you know, everybody thinks I need to pick them up. Your movement is actually sufficient in, in yeah. this is a clear case of what Kazushi and movement is all about. Can you do one more time? But watch his hands, everybody. He's not lifting with his hands. He's, he's holding with his hands, connecting the bodies together with the grip, and he's not necessarily lifting. And when you do a double sleeve, you really can't yeah. lift very well anyway. I mean, maybe if I was like a foot taller than, than he was and, you know, really strong, I could pull him up real hard this way and Hit him. And I've seen guys that are really heavy on the grips, you know, they'll pop, 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 swing the guy this way and swing him that way and then foot sweep him. But at that point, you're wasting so much energy to get it. It really is just open your hips up, get the timing right and blow right through them. It's, it's, the, it's one of the throws that's kind of the epitome of judo in that regard. You can't do it correctly unless you have the timing and the kazushi to do it. Yeah, th this is foot sweeps are essential in whether we do judo, sambo, whatever the grappling sport is, but they do come to us directly from judo. And this is where judo really uh, has a lot to offer in this way because uh, the, the timing move. This is this is kazushi in action. Yep. You know, body movement is really, and, and we're working, and the body movement we're using here, by the way, is a sugiyashi or a sliding foot action, okay? Now, remember the old saying, the faster you go, the easier you throw? So I want to create a fast tempo in the movement with this foot sweep. Foot sweeps come out of a fast tempo, usually, that are effective. And I want to catch a nice throw. If I do this too slow, we're too heavy on our feet. Just like Eric and I were talking about earlier, you don't want to be heavy-footed. You know, you want, you want to be gliding. And this is where you teach, you learn good foot movement. Can you do the double step first and the single step, and then we'll wrap it up? There you go, in a double sleeve. Again, we're doing double sleeve tonight. You do this in a turning Taisabaki action, but we're doing in a single, you know, a straight line movement. Okay, in a one step and hit. There you go. And you can see it is movement and action. We're, we've been working Ogaruma tonight, okay, major wheel. And a lot of people confuse it with Harai Goshi. Remember, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's a big move across the, the leg across here. The axis is right here, okay? But what will help some of you guys, and we, I was discussing this, this with Eric before, and that's why I'm kind of showing it to now. 
everybody. A good variation of getting into Ogre Room, it's a very useful throw, by the way, especially for big tall guys with long legs, like we are. Um, so let's take a look at it. Uh, get your back grip here. Turn. You get this back grip here, so you got a good grip here. All right, just, just, just more competitive style. And right here, on here. So I've got, like, a, put the loop over them. Remember how we talk about that a lot? So I've got a, you know, I've got a loop around them, and I just suck them in nice and tight, okay? But when I do this, I want to make sure, I'm, I'm going to put his pectoral area to my pectoral area, and it's kind of like a hinge on a door. It's just, it's just moving, okay? So, so you can picture that in your mind. So when I do this, when I suck it in, it, we're probably going to have to be fairly close contact here, fairly short grip in the situation here. But I do this when I pop them in, I pop them in here, and here's the contact right here. See this? And now all I'm going to do, or I want to do, is I'm going to keep sucking it in this way, keep turning. As I turn the body, I try to pull my hand all the way around over to here, back behind my left side here, as I swing about and catch it with the ogaroma. Okay? You did want that, Derek. So, but, but watch how what we want to do is get, pull him into your chest. And a lot of times it could be, come out just a second, you're fairly close grip, you're working real close. This is where you're working real tight, close contact. Your first goal is to suck them into your chest, peck to peck. Now see, once he does that, he'll do a quick back spin and her up and over him. And it is, it's, it's, it's not Harai Goshi because he's not throwing him over his hip. He's throwing him over this upper part of the leg, so it makes it an over room. So let's look at how he does it, see how he sucks it in. Peck to peck, turn, and it, by pulling it in peck to peck, pulling it in peck to peck here, when you're doing this, see it gets you you're nice and solid here, and as you're turning, as I do my back step, you can't help, you help turn it over. And so you're really steering like this. Here's one more time. So, so look at how he pulls it peck to peck. And there you go, he's right on. So that's a really cool old Garuma, and it's, there are a lot of different ways to do all the basic throws, and this is just one of them, and it was working for you pretty well when we were practicing on it tonight, okay? Let's do a few more on that, and then we'll do some rondo. How's that, okay? Uh, so he's bent over again, and get my, my shoulder grip, as an early warning system, but also as a me means of control, I'm gonna catch my low grip. Now, in this case, I'm gonna weight him down a little bit on this shoulder because that puts him on this foot. Okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step through here, okay? I'm gonna catch the foot, and I'm gonna bring him right down. You can skip to the side as well if you're not comfortable taking the back step to come through. I can skip and then catch. Okay? So normally with this, I, I tell the guys, okay, if you want to be nice, you know, use the normal method of your foot sweep with the bottom of your foot and the straight leg. Okay? If you want to be a little meaner about it, you hook in with the bottom part of your shin and you flex your foot. Catch, lift. Okay. So Guys, this is, this is really a, just a real practical application of Kosodagari. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a, in judo terms, it's Kosodagari. But you see both ways work, the foot sweep type method, but the, the, what we call the foot kick, you know, the foot kick throw, that's really a nice leg trap him. Mm -hmm. So play, play both of them. Can you show again? Sure, from sure. Okay, so again, he's low spine. Okay, get my hand to grip, catch hold of the sleeve, okay? I'm either gonna skip sideways or back step, okay? Now he goes. Good. Okay. I'll do it again with the Yeah, do the do the foot kick style. Yeah. See it's rather unceremonious, <laughs> but it really does work. He's already low, so his weight is is going to be back, okay? And if by getting this grip, I'm gonna push him down on that shoulder that puts him right on that foot, okay? 
And as soon as I get behind it, now it's pretty easy to, to sweep that, that leg out of the front and then wheel them down with my hands. Okay. But if I don't get them with the weight on that foot, so I can stand up normally. Okay, so if I take that same grip, okay, not gonna work. Okay? So take advantage of it, get them to weigh down on it, and down he goes. Okay? And if he's bent over, even better. Okay? Normally I'll just start off with this and see how mobile the guy is. If he comes out and he's low slung like that, boom, boom. Oh, okay, you're gonna make this easy on me. Okay? If the foot sweep doesn't work, then I start going after the leg style of Chimata and it's Moana Uchi. Good. Yeah. Anybody want to try, guys? Okay, let's go. Thanks.